Situated on the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea, the Sultanate of Oman has made a name for itself in the most unlikely of ways. Known as the Switzerland of the Middle East, the country has managed to act as a mediator in a region known mostly for conflict. The capital Muscat is home to negotiation attempts and peace deals, while Omani diplomats often act as liaisons between belligerent nations. All these international relations are pursued in the name of survival. But how did this playbook come into being and how does it work? I'm your host Shivan and welcome to Caspian Report. Today's episode is made possible by NordVPN. If you want to reduce your digital footprint, check out NordVPN. It's affordable, user-friendly, and it works on mobile devices as well. Go to nordvpn.com slash CaspianReport and use the promo code CaspianReport to get a discount on the premium version. When looking at the map, it's easy to dismiss Oman. With only Saudi Arabia, Yemen and the United Arab Emirates as its direct neighbors, the country is relatively far from the major epicenters of the region. Oman's isolation is compounded by the Rub al Khali Desert, which shields the country's western flank. While it has helped to deter invading forces, this means that 82% of the country is arid and much of the interior remains uninhabited. For these reasons, Oman has historically looked beyond its borders and towards the seas. The situation remains the same today. With the advent of oil production in the 1930s, countries like Saudi Arabia and Iraq saw radical shifts in their socio-economic circumstances. Oman, situated at the mouth of the Persian Gulf, was strategically placed. Having control over the Musandam exclave set the shipping lanes of the Hormuz choke point within Oman's territorial waters, which is a strait that spans around 39 kilometers across from this point, 32 kilometers of which is navigable. With over 21 million barrels of crude oil flowing through the Strait of Hormuz per day, any interruption to the free movement of tankers and shipping vessels could spell major economic disaster across the world. For oil exporting countries, it's a matter of life or death. Now, this factor helps to contextualize why Oman maintains a seemingly neutral appearance in Middle Eastern affairs. It is one of the few Arab nations that can comfortably work with both Saudi Arabia and Iran. It is a nation that has hosted Israeli diplomats while supporting the Palestinian cause. Omani foreign policy is simply one of many faces, yet these different initiatives follow a single goal. With imposing neighbors, there is a perpetual level of concern over Oman and its geopolitical leanings. Should Muscat side with one hegemon, the balance of power on the Persian Gulf would be tipped, and the slightest provocation could put the country in a disastrous position. To deter these geopolitical threats, Oman has developed an international strategy that highlights its unique geographical position. Many Omani officials emphasize the necessity of free and unhindered shipping across the Strait of Hormuz, a stance most nations in the region can agree on. Oman has also leveraged this framing to foster friendly terms with major foreign powers, increasing the country's security buffer. By employing this coalition-building approach, Oman can weave a web of alliances to ensure some level of protection should its more volatile neighbors act up. To put it simply, Oman keeps its friends close and its enemies closer. This foreign policy has its roots in the early inception of the state. After a bloodless coup in 1970, Sultan Qaboos bin Said moved the country away from its isolationist roots. However, the new Sultan had inherited a state, not a unified nation. After putting down a large rebellion, Sultan Qaboos found a formula that worked. He distributed the country's hydrocarbon wealth to the most influential tribes, towns and political figures. By doing so, the Sultan created a network of patrons who were loyal to his direct handouts. It wasn't perfect, but it worked. Foreign policy-wise, to maintain Oman's independence, Qaboos made his country valuable to powers big and small, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Iran, Israel, 
Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and so on. None could quite afford to sideline Oman. When Egypt and Israel signed the Camp David Accords in 1978, Cairo was thrown out the Arab League. Nearly every Arab leader disengaged ties with the Egyptian president Anwar Sadat. Oman, however, remained one of the few that maintained relations with the Egyptians, and Sultan Gabus was the first Arab head of state to visit Cairo. Contrary to its neighbors, Oman saw little reason to shun Egypt viewing the situation as an opportunity for developing strong regional allies. A year later, the Iranian revolution sent shockwaves across the region and fears of anti-government Islamist takeovers threatened the survival of the monarchies in the Arabian Peninsula. The armed conflict that ensued between Iran and Iraq in the 1980s further escalated region-wide tensions. As the Iraqis and Iranians began to mine the Persian Gulf and attack ships indiscriminately, Muscat drafted a multitude of strategies to defend itself. In 1981, Oman worked with Saudi Arabia and the other Gulf monarchies to create a multilateral institution known as the Gulf Cooperation Council, or GCC. It gave the member states a regional shield against the chaos that was unfolding between Iran and Iraq. This was not the only strategy employed by policymakers in Muscat. Numerous bilateral dealings, both covert and overt, were conducted at the time. In fact, Oman was nearly convinced to use its air force to strike at Iranian sites, but it was forced to reconsider after pressure from Britain. This near-catastrophic decision sealed the faith of Omani politics. From that moment onwards, instead of physical force, Muscat came to rely on diplomacy to achieve its goals. As such, Omani diplomats visited Tehran to negotiate a financial aid package. Meanwhile, on the floor of the United Nations, Omani representatives pleaded the international community to foster peace talks between Iran and Iraq. Throughout the 1980s, Muscat hosted peace talks between Baghdad and Tehran, and by 1989, the negotiations paid off. Hostilities ceased, while security and stability returned to the Hormuz choke point. Importantly, Oman also made overtures to international partners, mainly the United States. Although the country enjoyed strong ties with the United Kingdom, which it still maintains to this day, American involvement in the Persian Gulf was increasing, and the opportunity to secure deals with one of the world's dominant hegemons was one they could not pass up. President Ronald Reagan held bilateral discussions with Sultan Gabuz and even invited him to the White House in 1983. These negotiations resulted in a series of agreements that provided over $165 million in economic aid and thousands of American forces in Omani territory, which deterred direct incursions from both the Iranians and Iraqis. These historical examples highlight one of the few instances of Oman's strategy. Much of the groundwork established in the 1970s, 1980s would reverberate into the 21st century. With the increasing tensions of the Saudi-Iranian Cold War, the balancing act between Oman's many friends and foes has become more critical and necessary. The ties developed during the Iran-Iraq war would prove to be fundamental in laying the groundwork for the Iranian nuclear deal. Oman quickly became the perfect liaison for conflict resolution, and for years Muscat used its position between the Americans and Iranians as a back channel for secret hostage negotiations. To smoothen this process, Sultan Gabus once more held key negotiations in the capital while Bank Muscat provided considerable funds to the Iranians as an incentive to adhering to the nuclear deal. In one of the most geopolitically volatile regions of the world and with threats on all sides, Oman has worked hard to strengthen its national security. Although lacking in manpower and natural resources, the country has been able to utilize robust relationships with other nations and international organizations. 
from the GCC to the UN to the United States. Oman is a quiet but powerful friend to have. It has managed a dizzying network of different partners and somehow manages to navigate these waters without major repercussions. That is the art of diplomacy. However, the world is not static. As the Saudi-Iranian conflict ramps up and as China and Russia continue to chip away at America's sphere of influence, Oman must remain ever wary if it is to maintain its playbook as the Switzerland of the Middle East. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe for the algorithm. Thank you for watching and Saul.